Good morning. I'm Bridget Washington, chef and cookbook author. Thank you for joining us here at the Dinah E. Gore Research and Teaching, Teaching Kitchens at NC State. Today we're talking about all things beets. During this unit presentation, we're going to jump right in into how to buy and store beets, nutritional information of, regarding beets, how we are using beets in existing FNAP recipes, and also how you can take beets and use them throughout the week. So let's get started. So these are the two main varieties of beets. You have golden yellow beets and red, purplish, dark red beets. And when you're buying beets, you really want to get a bulb that is heavy in relation to its size. It should be a firm, dense skin. The beet should also not relent to a lot of touch. In addition, you want to look at the leaves when buying beets. The leaves should be firm, verdant, crisp, and also they should not have any holes or big damages. Now, when you're buying, when you're storing beets, you want to make sure and detach the stems from the actual root because the leaves tend to draw moisture away from the actual beets. And when that happens, you will have a beet that is not very moist and firm and it also, the leaves also withdraw color from the beet. So when storing them, store in the refrigerator with just the bulb and some of the stem. And don't toss the beet greens. We'll come back to that later. There's a secret. And so, so now we're going to talk about how to peel beets. Now, this is a raw beet. And with a raw beet, a gentle rinse and a slight peel will give you enough prep for you to go on to other recipe ideas. And so to peel a beet, you, I usually use a paring knife, although you could use a vegetable peeler. And you just cut the tip and the root off. And then you start at the top and then you peel. You don't want to get too much into the skin because you don't want to remove all of the flesh. So you really want to get a thin, as thin as a layer of possible when peeling your beet. And you just continue to peel all the way through. And if you could get that in one fell swoop, that would be good, but that's not, that's not any type of expectation. Then you, and so you, what, what ends up happening is that you get this really clean beet that is ready for whatever recipe you have in hand. And that's with a raw beet. This is a roasted beet. And with a roasted beet, you do not have to peel it. What happens is that you could pop it into the oven with the skin on. And you could use tin foil to remove the skin. So you just have the foil, just crush it gently in the palm of your hands. And what happens is that the tin foil gently removes the peel of the skin without much pressure. And you get the skin peeling off in a very, very easy pattern. And it's the abrasion of the foil against the soft texture of the beet that really allows the peel to come off really easily. And so with beets, it is a nutritional powerhouse. It's high in folate and fiber, as well as vitamin C and potassium. You really can't beat beets. And so we're going to get started with our first recipe, which is a chicken quesadilla with green apple and roasted beet salsa. So here we have our roasted beets that's been already diced. And then we have also the ingredients, cilantro, cilantro, jalapeno peppers, green apples, salt, and olive oil. And what I love about this salsa is that it is a year-round way to enjoy a seasonal, to enjoy beets, but also it brings an unexpected flavor and nuance to something ordinary like a quesadilla. So to make the salsa, we're going to take our roasted beets 
as well as our cilantro. We get some spice from the jalapeno. Our apples already been bathed in the lime juice, which gives it great texture and crunch. Olive oil allows all of these ingredients to really meld and salt. And some freshly cracked black pepper. And we stir this together and we just allow all of the ingredients to really combine. And what you'll get is that you'll find that the acid from the lime juice as well as the pucker from the crisp green apple really plays well with the beets. And then the cilantro just lifts it to another, to an unexpected Latin flavor as well as the jalapenos. And plus it's just gorgeous to look at. So that's the salsa. The salsa is going to hang out here while we prepare the quesadilla. And so, for the quesadilla, what we have is sauteed onions and shredded chicken. Now the shredded chicken, it's, the chicken is from a can. However, rotisserie chicken is also a really good substitute, as well as some cheese. So to make the quesadilla, you take the shredded chicken and sauteed onions in a, in a warm pan with your tortilla. And then, this is some of our salsa. We'll put that on, sprinkle that, sprinkle that on. And then the cheese really melts everything together really beautifully. You can take a little bit of water to seal the edges if you really want to make a nice tight pocket, but you don't really have to. It comes out great as it is. And you just allow that to cook, allow the cheese to melt, and the onions and the chicken and the salsa really melt and cohere. And then what we have here is our finished product. So you have a beautiful, nice dark sear of the case from the quesadilla. And what I like to do at this at this time is that I cannot get enough of that green apple beet salsa. So I toss. There's some more on top of it. And not only is it a functional edible garnish, but it also really allow you to get the maximum amount of, maximum amount of beets possible in a dish that is easy and buttoned down and very approachable for weeknight presentation. So now we're going to move on to our other recipe today. <coughs> which is the chicken and ratatouille sheet pan supper. And so here we have our, so here we have our chicken. And so in this, this is a more of a end of season. I like to think of it as an end of season, easy to assemble weeknight workhouse meal because you have raw beets, eggplant, zucchini, tomatoes, onions, and garlic. And all of these ingredients are very accessible. Of course, the beets are at their peak at this time of year, early, early fall, and the, be the beets are very, very sweet. And what I found is that the sweetness of the beets really play up with the, you get the tang and pucker from the tomatoes and that really hearty aromatic one two punch from the garlic and all of that is all of that comes together with a balsamic thyme vinaigrette however olive oil is just fine so to make this we just combine all of these ingredients onto a sheet pan it is the most forgiving way to get dinner ready in a flash so we take the raw beets
eggplant. Now these are fresh tomatoes, but canned tomatoes work just as well. In fact, sometimes when I'm running very late, I just open up a can and of tomatoes and we just pour that rice up on there. And then we oh. And then we also have our zucchini. Top that with onions. And a heaping amount of garlic because the garlic really just makes gives everything that savory pucker um, and really allow these ingredients to really shine. So here we have a balsamic and thyme vinaigrette. And like I said, um, this or if you don't want to use this, you could also use plain olive oil. So I'm going to pour some of this over our chicken and then over the vegetables. And next, I'm going to pour salt over everything, the chicken included, and then freshly ground black pepper. I'm just going to give everything a little toss so that the balsamic dressing is well tossed in with the salt and the garlic and all of the ingredients get a hearty coating from the dressing and then in the oven it goes and so it's going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes and right at the 20 minute mark you'll want to check on this to make sure that everything is going as it should Then, here we go. And then this is the this is the result we have. So here we have a dish that came together with just a little bit of time in the oven. And what you'll see is that all of the natural juices of the zucchini and the eggplant and the sweetness of the beets really ooze out into the plate, into the pan, and you have a, a very spectacular dish that is hearty and satisfying, um, but it is also packs a powerful punch. And the thyme, the balsamic thyme vinaigrette is completely carries over and transforms well and you have a, a really satisfying dish that is a, a good weeknight staple. So another favorite of mine, and I think this is one of the reasons why it's my favorite, is this oven fries, are these oven fries. And so for these oven fries, what we have here are yellow beets and red beets. And there's a secret ingredient to these oven fries, and that is an orange. So what we have here is orange juice, fresh orange juice, and orange zest. And what happens is that the orange zest, when combined with the beets, the yellow and the red beets, really draws out that natural sugar present in the beets, and it gives it an expected flavor because it's, you get a hint of something citrusy and exciting, but it's not elaborated. And it really just allows these simple oven fries to be just a little bit more elevated. And an orange is something that is everywhere. It's probably one of the most common ingredients. And so to make our oven fries, you <coughs> transfer those onto a pan, onto your sheet pan. And then you take, oops, sorry, just coat that with some cooking spray. And we toss these until a little bit of salt and black pepper. 
when we toss with some olive oil. And next comes my favorite, the orange juice. And finally, my big favorite is the orange zest. And you will see that when you incorporate orange zest into most any root vegetables, it could be beets, but you could also use this with sweet potatoes. It just allows the ingredient to sing in a way that it doesn't really do. And it is something about the, the sweetness of orange zest. It's not as dominant as a citrusy flavor as a lemon. You don't get quite as much as that, that pucker, but you still get an, an element that is unexpected and that is just truly, truly delicious. So here we go. So again, we put this in the oven. Um, again, putting this in a 400 degree oven. And about at the halfway mark, we are going to check on those. Um, and the halfway mark is about 15 minutes. We're going to check on those and just make sure that all of the, um, that it's not burning or sticking to the pan and you really get a very, very fun uh, dish. And what I like too about the oven fries is that you could eat it as its own next to a sandwich or you could also put a heaping amount of greens on it and have that. Like, because I think it has enough bite and dimension to hold its own. You don't really, it's not, it, it's a star enough in itself. You don't really have to have a big meal to serve with it. And remember we talked about those beet greens earlier? Well, here's the secret. So now we're going to make a beet green pesto. And with the beet green pesto, we are going to use the beet greens to make this pesto along with spinach, almonds, garlic, parmesan cheese, lemon juice. And what happens is that the pesto is going to go on top of the pasta and it really allows the pasta to have a new type of preparation. And so usually you make pesto with pine nuts, but I like almonds because not only are they more affordable, but they're all, you still get that same nutty punch. You still get that same element of that really, you get the crunch and you get the bite and it's everything in one. So here, we, here we're going to go with the pesto. So first thing, I'm going to start off with some spinach because in addition to the beet greens, I also like to incorporate another dark, greasy, another dark green leafy vegetable, and that is the spinach. So we have the spinach, and then now we have our beet greens. And you can hear how crisp and verdant these leaves are, and that's what you want to look for. Next, we're going to put our almonds. Followed by fresh garlic. Some salt and pepper. And some lem fresh lemon juice. And lemon juice really lifts all of these ingredients up where you can taste it. Because I think that's what lemon juice is. It just makes everything a little bit more bright. It gives it shine, gives it an element of surprise. It's, here I am, I'm pesto. And so that's what we have. So now we're going to add some Parmesan cheese. And last but not least, we're going to add olive oil. I'm not going to put in all of the olive oil yet because depending on how you like your pesto, you could either stream in some during the process. So we're going to cover this and now we're going to blend. So I'm going to stream in a little bit more olive oil, the rest of it actually. And 
and there we have it. So wipe these down, wipe the side down. And you have this incredibly delicious pesto that could go on top fresh pasta in a, in a splash without much intervention. So we're going to use a bowl. And what I like about this pesto is that it goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. I like to make a big batch and freeze it. So within one plant, in one little unassuming beet plant, not only do I get multiple preparations for how to use the actual beet, but then I have the pesto from the beet leaves that goes another way. It, it's just a very long, it just, it's a workhorse of a vegetable. And it's one of my favorites, especially now going in to early fall. And so to assemble this, I take a little bit of pasta, and this is just whole grain pasta. And some of our fresh, you could really smell all of those ingredients. Fresh beet top pesto. And notice I did not use any basil because I think that the pesto, the beet top, has enough energy to hold its own. It, it, don't, it doesn't really need that extra um from the basil, although you could definitely add it. And we just toss this together. And this is actually one of the only, this beet top pasta is one of the only dishes that my children eat. They love it. And so, here we have it. So here we have four unique ways, four button down ways, and four easy ways to use beets in a multiple of preparations. Our chicken quesadilla with the green apple and beet salsa, our sheet pan chicken ratatouille, oven fries with orange zest, and, of course, the pesto. So, thank you very much. I forgot to pull out the...